Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to do a basic day-night cycle using um, overlapping skybox textures. This was a request from someone a few weeks ago. I will double check um, what your username is. I've forgotten it right now at time of recording. I'm sorry, it will be in the com it'll be in the, uh, the video description. Uh, thank you so much for the request. I hope my uh, screenshot at the time helped you out. Here's a follow-up video to uh, help you along. So I've set this up in a world um, to try it out. That was when I was helping out this particular user. And what I've actually managed to do as well is put this within my public folder. So if I turn on my private UI here and we hop over to smooth POV, if you go to my public folder, tutorials, tutorial worlds, you'll see day night cycle here. And because I've made the day night cycle world here, anyone public, it means that you'll be able to spawn it out and visit it, even though it's not published within the main world browser. I'm going to be doing this a lot more because it allows you to see what happens at the end of a tutorial, allows you to come in and take a look at the setup pre-working and visitable, but it doesn't clog up the world browser with a lot of um, sort of junky um, uh, example worlds such as this one. So I'm going to go over here to the speed dial here, and I'm going to show you that I can make the speed of the day-night cycle go really, really fast, and I can also make it go really, really slow. For your world, you'll want to tune this to your day-night cycle for how how long your day and nights on your planet is. Uh, but for this one, we're going to keep it kind of a, a noticeable rate so that you can see that it's still working. So this is an example of the of the world working. I want to go to a new world and build this from scratch. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is take these two images with me. Um, they're a bit difficult to pull out of textures. Um, you can find these within the world, just do exactly what I did here, grab them from that slot and chuck them across. Let's hold on over to a new world, and then I'll transfer those across. So new world, space world, nobody can join. Go. So now we're in a new space world, and you'll see it's uh, just space outside. I'm going to hop back to the night cycle example, and I'm going to pick up both of my um, textures. So I'm going to open up my world switcher and then come back. And then I've got them here, and we're ready to start. So we'll need a developer tooltip for this, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the standard developer tooltip. Equip it, open up the inspector of the root of your world, and find the item that says Skybox here. Now we'll do Skybox tutorials um, and sort of more Skybox related matters uh, as a separate sort of video or series of videos. If you've got questions on Skyboxes, let me know. There's a bunch of options here and I don't have time to go over all of them today, but we will go over the um, day-night cycle swapping, which is the goal of this tutorial. So by default, the space world starts with a projection 360 material as the skybox. You'll see here projection 360 material, and then you'll see that's also set on the material of the skybox up here. You can also create these manually. They're in Attach Component, Assets, Materials, Skybox, and then Procedural. Oh, no, they're not. They're not unlit. They are in Unlit. Unlit. Projection 360 material. That always confuses me. So Projection 360 material is there. You don't have one. Now with that, what we need to do is we need to set up the texture and secondary texture of the uh, Projection 360 material. So I'm going to clear this. You'll see the texture of the Skybox goes a bit weird. We're going to drop this one in and then this one in. So you'll see we've got the uh, day sky, sorry, the night skybox here and then the day skybox here. And then if I go ahead and I see this texture lerp, I drag this from right to left, or left to right, you'll see we're now in daytime. If I drag it all the way back, you'll see that now we're back at nighttime. You could stop there and just manually hook up a uh, slider to this, but we can also go one step further. We go to some empty area in the world and we go create new empty object. We've got a nice brand new empty object to add some components to so that it's nice and empty. And then we're going to uh, double check my zoom rate actually. I always get paranoid about this one. It's been a while since I recorded. Oh, we're good. Cool. Um, I always make sure that you can see everything. Let me know if you're struggling to see stuff in my tutorials. I'll, I'll, I'll fix it up. So on this new empty object, attach component, and then we're looking for I utility multi-texture fader A, and then do I texture 2D here. And you'll see it gets added. 
Here's the component. I'm going to set it up piece by piece, but we're going to jump around a little bit just so that it makes more sense once we get there. So we're going to add two textures. And we're going to put the space one up here by grabbing it and bring it across to zero. You'll see it goes to zero. Um, a day goes across to one. Next, we're going to see the word here, texture, where it says texture. We're going to grab the word texture, put that into first texture. We're going to grab secondary texture, put that into second texture. And then here you'll see lerp. We're going to grab the word lerp, texture lerp, and put it into lerp. So now that's component set up. The only thing we need to do now is change this positional value. So if you see here, if I change this to one, we're now back at daytime. And if I change it to zero, we're back at nighttime. So we can now scroll that forwards um, by incrementing it. And you might be tempted to do that with logics, and that's fine. If you're more familiar with logics, go ahead and do that right now. But you can also do it with a component. So here, if we go to attach component, transform drivers, panel 1D, you'll then get a panel 1D component. Now I go over panners in my panner video, so I will link to that one as well. But here, just grab, grab the word position, drop it into the target field here, and then set your speed to how fast you want the transition to occur. So if I set this to 0.1, you'll see that we're off. This number is incrementing, and it's going up and up and up and up. And you'll see here that we're gradually going between day and night here with our skyboxes. If I then increase this, so we can go up to 1, you'll see now we're kind of at a sort of ridiculous rate where we're going between super bright and super dark here. So we should go all the way down to, say, 0 0.1 again. And it's now much more calmer. So the last thing I had in my example was a slider that was set up to control the speed here. So to do that, go over again to more space in the world, go to create new object Neos UI slider, and you'll get a slider. Inspect that. When you open up a slider here, you'll find a slider, um, Neos slider component. What you want to do here is set the value to be what you'd like it to start at. So 0 0.1 is what we're currently starting at. So 0 0.1 over here and then a min and max. And I'm actually going to leave that at 0 and 1. And what that means is that we can go between 0 and 1 on our slider just by dragging it backwards and forwards. Now the one remaining thing to do to get the slider working here is to drag the speed variable here from our panner into the dry field here of our Neo slider. And now they're hooked up. If I bring this all the way down, you'll see that now we're much faster. And then I can bring it all the way down to here, and you'll see now we're much slower. When you grab this, you'll see that it kind of flickers a little bit, and I'm sorry about that. That's just the way that the panda component works. If you'd like that to be smoother, then try some uh, other items. You can also use things like the sign node of Inlogix to make this smoother. But I wanted to show you a nice simple way of doing it that um, didn't have any logic or, or programming terminology in it. Um, try out the sign node, try out the t node, try out t divided by 10, t times 10. I'll show you where those are, but I'm not going to go through them. So try out, uh, where are we? Try out these t nodes, t times 10, t divided by 10, t divided, uh, divided by 2, and then the sign node as well. Uh, where are we? Math. Uh, sign. Try plugging that into the position here as well, and seeing what you can do to affect the day-night cycle. That's all there is to it, to uh, my simple day-night cycle. If you have any questions, please do let me know. And remember, you can go to that public folder, and you can go to the day-night cycle world, and you'll see everything here that you need to play around with it. On the left here, you'll see the skybox uh, inspector. And on the right here, you'll see that empty object we made with the panner. And then to the right of that, you'll see a speed slider. And I've labeled it speed just so that you uh, can easily see that it's the right slider that you're playing with.
and you can drag this around. You can also grab textures from skyboxes within Neos Essentials if you'd like. So go here to Neos Essentials skyboxes, and then let's say we wanted this red one. Grab the red one, equip that tool, hit edit on it, and then we can take this and we can replace that here. And now you'll see that we go between this kind of red sky and uh, the uh, the night sky here. That's quite a nice effect. Try out. There'll be more on skyboxes later. There's uh, quite a lot that you can do with them. Um, this was just a easy thing to demonstrate. Let me know what you think. See you next time. Bye-bye.